Hey everyone, it's Kabir here. In this session, we are going to understand about data binding. How can we implement data binding in React JS? So let us start the session. So what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to create one component known as one card component. Just consider this is a card, okay? In this card, I'm going to have one label. I'm going to say like enter the text, enter some text and I'm going to have here one box like uh, one input box right I'm going to create one input box like this here now whenever and I will have one container just just one kind of container like some pip or some h2 right now whenever I'm going to type something here Whenever I'm going to type something here, like I'm going to type Kabir, and that Kabir should come here. It should appear here. So whatever changes I'm going to do in this particular inbox, that should reflect here. So we are binding the two components, or we can say two elements, right? So this concept is called data binding. So let us see how can we implement this data binding concept in our React application. So let's go to our VS code. Now in VS code, we are going to create one component. So in SRC, we have the component folder. So let's create a component. So I'm going to create something like a card component. Mm, card component, right, dot JS. Okay. Now let's create a class component. So the first statement should be, imp we have to import the React. Import, it should be React from React, done. So we have imported. Now we need to create a component, but which type of component we want to create? We want to create class-based component. So class, your component name, it will be card comp, extends from your react dot component. We have created. Now this component, I mean this class component, I have to override one method. The name of that method is render, okay. We are going to override done so and this render method is going to return you one ui some ui so return uh, some ui okay i'm telling it is going to return some ui now this component wanted to use by some other component or i want to uh, configure this component in some other component so for that i have to give the permission to other component right so how can I give the permission by writing one statement like export? So I am telling, yes, I am ready to export. Now, whoever want this component, just you have to import. So export default, and you have to give the name of your component. Okay, done. Now here, I want to create one card. So how can we create a card in Bootstrap? For that, we have a class known as card. So just dot card, and just tap on your particular tab button so it is going to construct this this is the shortcut key so we are going to learn so many shortcuts in this series so as of now this one shortcut so we have created the card now what card contains card contains card header right so i'm going to create one card header card header and just tap okay i have created the card header and what else card is going to card contain one card body so let's create a card body card body and it should be like card and so now here we have to type tap so i think so we have to do like card dot card body and tap so we got the card body as well now it contains card footer as well, but we don't want it. We don't want to use any card footer. So now what I wanted to do in this card, I want to create like just go to our paint. This is our card. So this part text and this input part will be in the header part. And whatever we are going to enter some text in this input box that should appear in this particular H tag or P tag. So this H or P tag we are going to keep in the card body, right? So this should be in the card head and this should be in the card body. So just let's concentrate on this particular design. So here I wanted to create one text. So just come to your VS 
and if I want to create some text, I'm going to take span, okay? And I'm going to tell enter text. Okay, now I want to create one input. So for that, just type input tab. I have created the input, right? Now, something, whatever I'm going to type here, it should reflect in this particular card body. So I'm going to take here as a H5, H5. And some whatever the data I'm going to type here, it should reflect here. So as of now, let's hard code it. I'm going to write like copy it. Okay, just save it. Now I want to configure this particular component in app component. So just go to app component. So first of all, we have to import it. So how can we import? Import, we have to give the reference like uh, it's a card component. Okay, from we have to give the path of our component. It's a card component. Okay, we have given. Now, what I wanted to do in this particular thing, I want to take one nav bar, right? So for that, we have a nav bar or nav component in Bootstrap. So let's use that. I hope everybody knows Bootstrap. So let's, how can we do? So we have a component like nav. Okay, fine. We will take some class names to design it. So we will be taking like nav bar. We will be taking like um, nav bar dark and bg dark. Right? It, it is going to create a one nav bar. Fine. Now here I will be taking some a tag and um, some href like equals to something slash. And I want to do some class name equals to navbar brand. It's just a designing, nothing else then. It's just, you have to like, it's just your, what do we say? Bootstrap skills. So here I wanted to write something like data binding. So it will be like our heading part, data binding. And uh, so just save it. Just let's see what it is going to appear. So we have to go to the terminal. In terminal, if you want to run our React application, we have the command called npm start. So it is like npm start, fine, enter. So let us see how it is going to look now. But I didn't use card component. So let's, we are going to use that particular class component. So this is what it is going to look like, data binding, right? Now here I want my card. So what I have to do, just I'm going to go here. So just drag it down. So here, what I'm going to do after this nav, I'm going to take one container. So it will be like dot container and just enter tag. Okay, in this container, I want one row. So R O row tab. In this row, in this row, I'm going to take the space of six columns. I'm going to occupy the space of six columns. So how can we tell that? For that, we have to tell in the div, okay, in this div, I want to say column small, it should be the six. So I'm telling in the row, I want to take the space of six card column space. I want to occupy the six column, six column card space. Okay, then now in this six column card space, I'm going to like uh, present my card component. So how can we card component? That's it. Just save it and just go to the browser. And it is going to like some look something like that. So let's design something to this card. Okay, so let's go to our VS code. Just go to your card component. So what I wanted to do for this card header, I want to give PG as a dark. Okay, and text should be the white. Okay, cool. Just save it and just go here. Okay, but I want some gap between this nav bar and this card. So for that, I'm going to say in this card, I want something like your mix is nothing but X axis means it is going to cover your left as well as right. I'm going to say three and I'm going to say YMY. YMY is nothing but your top and your bottom. 
So from top and bottom, it should be three pixels. So just save it and just go to your browser. Yeah, now it is looking good. Now, whatever I'm going to type in this particular text, right? Like if I'm texting hello, so this hello should appear here. Now, as of now, we have hard coded, so it is not reflecting. So it means we have to store this data somewhere. And from there, we have to take that data and we have to display here. This is the concept. So if I want to store somewhere my data, so what the concept we have learned in the previous session, it is a state. A state is like in a private container for your component. Whatever data you require, just store in that state. And wherever you require in that component, you have to extract that data from there, right? This is the concept we have learned in the previous session. So just come to your VS code. So first of all, we have to create the state, right? So let's create a state for that constructor. And the in constructor first statement should be the super. You have to call the super method. And then you have to create a state, this dot state. I have created the state, right? Now in this state, we, we will have one property, right? I will have the data property, right? Okay, fine. And here I'm going to say something like, okay, data is loading. It will be like a default value, right? Now this data, whatever I'm going to type in this particular input, that should reflect to this data. It should stay, I mean, that particular data should store in this particular state object. And I want to represent this particular data, state data in the H5. See, now we have the input, right? Now something I'm going to type, means some input I'm going to type. Whatever I'm going to type, that should particular thing should go and update in your this data property, right? Now, whatever it is updated, it should reflect to our H5, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write here like something. This dot state dot data. So whatever I'm going to type something here, it is going to, it should go and update in your particular state. Okay, whatever it is updated in your state, it should reflect to your H5. This is the concept, right? So we have did the half thing, like whatever it is going to store here, it is going to reflect in your H5. So let's see, in H5, it should appear data is loading. So just save it and just go to your browser and it is like data is loading. Now, if I'm typing here, nothing is reflecting because we are not updating our state. So whenever I'm going to type something here, it should instantly update your state, the first point. So whenever we want to update the state, right? So what we have to do, we will be writing one event known as on change event. It's the same event what we have in the JavaScript. So what on change event is going to do, whatever you are going to type or you are going to change something in your input, this event is going to trigger, right? Whenever this event is going to trigger, I want to update something in a state. So how can I update something in a state? by calling the method called set state. So whenever I'm going to change something, I have to call the set state, right? So how can I call the set state? So for that, what I'm doing, I'm taking one function, right? And the function name I wanted to give like um, update data, right? This is a function I'm going to create. This is the arrow function. Okay, I'm going to create the arrow function. I have created the arrow function. This function should be called whenever I do some changes here. Like some changes if I do in input, this function should call. So how can we understand some changes we did by writing one event called on change. So whenever on change is going to trigger, this should call. So how can we say to this our application? So for that we have to write the instruction like this dot, we have to give the update data since we are telling whenever I am going to do some changes, it is going to trigger on change event. And this on change event is going to call update data function. Okay, it is going to call. So whenever we are going to call some method on the event, this event is going to pass one object. And that object is called event object. It has them pass the event object. 
now our requirement is whenever i am going to change something whenever i am going to change or type something that particular data should go and update in the state but how can we update the state by the set state means whenever i am going to call on change it is going to call the update data so what i will be doing i will be just right calling the set state right right so now just observe what will happen whenever i am going to type something in this input some changes happen whenever some changes is going to happen it is going to trigger on change event right whenever a on change event is going to trigger it is going to call you the method update data so the control will comes to your update data by passing a event object right now this function is going to call your set state right whenever you are going to call your set state it is going to update your state and it is going to call your render method so every the data which you have in the state that is going to render in your browser right so this set state is going to take one object right that is nothing but your state object now what we want to update we want to update this particular property data okay i want to update data but with what you want to update whatever i am going to type inside a text box so how can we know what we have typed in, in the text box for that this particular event is passing an object called event for that what we are going to do event dot target this is nothing but whenever we are telling event dot target it is going to represent your input element input element right in this input element whatever we are going to type right whatever we are going to type inside your input element and that particular data is going to store in one attribute of your input element that attribute is called value okay so i am saving i am saying event dot target dot value right it it means i am taking the data from this input box and storing in the state and i am writing this state inside a set state so it is going to call my render method so this is what the flow is just understand what is going to happen now just save it just let us go and see whether it is updating or not like i am doing kabir so what happened just understand the flow when i am enter k right whenever i am enter the k it is going to trigger on change event right on change event is going to call your update data data function so control will comes to update data your update data is going to call your set state right what set state is going to do it is going to update your state and it is going to call your render method so and what we are doing in the set state in the set state we have one property known as data in this data we are updating whatever the changes we did in the input box by writing this particular statement that's it so this is what call we call the data binding like here i wanted to type like hello welcome to my react world something like this so this is what we call the data binding whatever we are typing here it is reflecting in this particular thing so this is all about this session we learned what is data binding in this session so just practice it it will be very easy thank you guys